Eight pickup trucks enter the ring, but only one will remain. Which compact truck will win 1986's Truck Mania? Watch to find out. But first, a mini truck montage. The year was 1986. Back then, you could get a compact truck that actually was compact. The rise of compact trucks in the 80s was a reaction to the oil crisis of the 1970s and an answer to the economic woes of the early 80s. Fuel efficiency became much more important and many of these new small trucks delivered on that promise. Since the 80s and 90s, trucks in the US have grown significantly in size, capability, and luxury. Even modern day mid-sized trucks would dwarf these compact trucks in comparison. But back in the 80s, trucks were used as trucks. Practicality and utility were paramount. Compact trucks served an important role, offering great utility and efficiency without breaking the bank. Modern pickup trucks are often more about luxury, status, and masculine pride. An $80,000 Ford F-350 fully optioned King Ranch Edition has nothing to do with practicality. It's an inefficient luxury mall crawler disguised as a blue collar workhorse. The simple, honest trucks from the 80s are really a throwback. There's something really nice about a vehicle that is what it says it is. It's a truck that isn't trying to be anything other than a truck. So let's hit the rewind button and take a trip back to 1986. What was the compact truck landscape back then? Turns out it was teeming with options. In today's video, we'll pit eight mini trucks against each other in a battle of the ages. Which one will come out on top? Let's start with the Americans. In this corner, we have the Ford Ranger. Next up is the Chevrolet S10. Here we have the new for 86 Jeep Comanche. Hailing from Japan is the Mitsubishi Mighty Max. The brand new for 86 Mazda B2000. The also brand new for 86 Nissan Hardbody. The very uncreatively named Toyota Pickup. And finally, the truck with the cutest name ever, the Isuzu Pup. Let the battle begin. Up first in this battle is the 1986 Ford Ranger. This first gen Ranger was introduced in 83 as the replacement for the Mazda built Ford Courier. The Ranger is significantly shorter and narrower than the full size F-150, but it certainly shares a family resemblance. This is the time when manufacturers were just starting to make trucks a bit more family friendly. 86 was the first year of the Ranger Super Cab with an extended cab and rear passenger seats. You wouldn't want to spend a ton of time in the back seat of one of these, but if you were a kid from the 80s, you'd know that it was slightly better than riding in the bed of the truck. You could get two or four wheel drive and choose between two bed lengths. Four engines were offered, two gas four cylinders, a diesel, or the fuel injected 2.9 liter V6, which cranked out a class leading 140 horsepower. Even with the V6, the Super Cab took 12 and a half seconds to reach 60 miles an hour, which was acceptable for the era. I can't imagine how slow it would have been with the diesel. I think I probably would have opted for the V6. Motor Week said the handling was acceptable, it was very comfortable, and had a car-like ride. People obviously liked them. Ford sold over 269,000 of these in 1986. I didn't really like the looks at the time, but I've come to appreciate the boxy look of this first-gen Ranger. And from 87 to 89, they had the Ranger GT Sport pickup, which looked awesome. Would a Ranger have been the truck for you in 86? The best built American trucks are built for tough. Joining us for the battle is the 1986 Chevrolet S10. S10's aerodynamic styling, efficiency, and overall utility represent the latest advancements in truck technology. First generation S10 debuted in 1982, the first compact truck built in the US by the big three automakers. Like Ford, Chevy's previous compact truck offering was also a rebadge of a Japanese truck. The S10 replaced the Chevy Love, which was essentially an Isuzu Faster. In 86, you had two engine choices. The 92 horsepower 2.5 liter Iron Duke inline four cylinder, or a newly updated 2.8 liter V6 making 125 horsepower. This 60 degree V6 wasn't exactly known to be reliable. Some even say it was a quote, reliability nightmare. With the V6, the S10 can reach 60 miles an hour in about 13 seconds. And I have to imagine with that Iron Duke four cylinder, it would have been a fair amount slower. Like the Ford, two and four wheel drive were available along with standard and extended cabs. Motorweek had good things to say about the styling and the interior space. 
but they said the ride was harsh and the handling was unsettling. Even though it wasn't the most refined truck available, Chevy sold a ton of these things, and they certainly were capable little machines. Race car driver Mike Horner raced a nearly stock S10 in the Baja 1000 and won his class. Could an everyday Chevy S10 survive? It not only survived, it won its class. I think I like the look of the Ranger slightly better than the S10. What do you think? Would this have been your compact truck choice in 1986? I would have wanted to wait until 89 when the S10 Baja was released. That thing is rad. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. Up next is the 1986.5 Nissan Hardbody, sometimes referred to as the Nissan truck and sold as the Navara in other markets. From molten steel and a fiery imagination, Nissan forges the most important truck advance in 25 years, the hard bodies. In 86, this was the only V6 power truck you could get in the US from an import brand. Designed in California and built in Tennessee, Nissan was the first importer to manufacture pickups in the United States back in 1983. Nissan was also the first to bring a compact truck to the US, sending the Datsun 320 pickup to our shores in 1961. The 520 became the top selling import pickup in the US for many years. For the hard body, two cab styles and two bed lengths were available. You could choose between two engines, a 2.4 liter four cylinder making 106 horsepower, or a three liter V6 found in the 300ZX making 140 horsepower right up there with the Ranger. Even with a decent amount of power, zero to 60 still took about 13 seconds. At the time, Motor Week called the handling, quote, a handful, though they appreciated the interior space and the comfortable ride. In terms of utility, the hard body's long bed was among the best in class. Out of the three that we've looked at so far, I think the styling of the hard body is probably my favorite. And I totally love the Desert Runner that came a bit later in 1988. What do you think of this American built import? Would it have been the truck for you? is Nissan. Entering the ring is the 1986 Toyota pickup. Yes, they couldn't even bother coming up with a real name for this thing. But they didn't need to. These things were durable, reliable, and held their value. No name needed when you have such a great reputation. Who's ready to beat up a mountain and muscle its way to the top? Toyota is who? Known as the Hilux in other markets, the 86 pickup had several configurations in the States. Available in half ton and one ton options with two bed lengths, two cab lengths, and two or four wheel drive. Powering the Toyota is the now iconic 22RE 2.4 liter inline four cylinder making 105 horsepower. No V6 was available, however, you could get an optional turbo 2.4 making 135 horsepower. Those turbo pickups didn't sell well and now they're a bit of a unicorn. The 22R was generally regarded as a very reliable engine. However, 1980s turbo technology wasn't the greatest, so these turbo motors were probably a little bit less likely to be reliable. The Toyota had less interior space than the domestics, but had a slightly better ride and handling. Like most of the trucks in this shootout, 0-60 could be achieved in around 13 seconds with the naturally aspirated motor. I actually own one of these, a fifth gen. It was a bare bones 1990 model with no power steering, no air conditioning, vinyl seats, no passenger side mirror, and a manual transmission. It was insanely reliable and I'm an idiot for selling it. Would the Toyota have been your choice in 86? After seeing the totally sweet 85 Toyota truck in Back to the Future, I think a 4x4 Toyota might have been for me. Oh, what a feeling. Next up, ready to fight, is the 1986 Mitsubishi Mighty Max. This truck is the second cheapest truck here, starting at $57.99. It was certainly positioned as an entry-level option in this market, competing mainly against the low-cost Isuzu Pup and other no-option base models. No V6 option for the Mitsubishi, but you did get to choose from two four cylinders, a two liter making 93 horsepower, and a 2.6 liter making 105 horsepower. Two and four wheel drive were available, but no extended cab. So if you had kids to cart around, you were out of luck, or just throw them in the truck bed. The interior was on the cheap side of things and not especially comfortable, but it was functional. There are a few strikes against this Mighty Max, but it would have been a decent option if you wanted a very inexpensive bare bones truck. The styling definitely seems the most dated out of any of these trucks. What do you think? Also, when is the last time you saw one of these? I don't think I've seen one in five years. They only sold about 28,000 of these in 86. I wonder how many are left. That year, they actually sold almost 79,000 of the Dodge Ram 50, which was a rebadge of this truck. 
Would you have opted for the bargain basement Mighty Max or would you have stepped up to one of the other trucks here? Let me know in the comments below. Mitsubishi takes you where you wanna be. New for 86 is the completely redesigned fourth generation Mazda B-Series trucks. Introducing Mazda's new B2000 SE5. Yes, it's easy to forget that Mazda actually used to offer trucks in the US. Known as the Proceed in Japan and many other names throughout the world, the B-Series was well received by auto journalists back in the day. The 86 B2000 came with a two liter four cylinder making a whopping 80 horsepower, one of the least potent power plants in this battle. Additional engine options arrived in 87, but as far as I can tell, this year was one engine choice only in the US. Zero to 60 was a slow 14 seconds. Even though this car was outmatched in the performance department, it was praised for its comfortable ride and decent handling while still providing the practicality and utility of a truck. MotorWeek said it was very nimble and was among the most car-like out of the compact trucks they tested that year. If all you want from a small truck is a bed in the back, then you're not ready for this one. This guy actually handles, and I never thought I'd say that about a truck. While I can't find any sales figures, I don't think Mazda sold very many of these in the US, and there seem to be very few left on the road. Though the ones I do see all seem to be slammed to the ground. I guess Mazdas were a go-to for this trend. What do you think of the Mazda B-Series? Would its car-like ride have earned your purchase? Let me know in the comments below. Let's take a look at the 1986 Isuzu Pup. Yes, that's right, it's P apostrophe UP. The Isuzu Pup, so incredible a Supreme Court justice is here to verify our claims. This truck actually has one of the oldest designs out of the contenders here, but that doesn't mean it looks outdated. The space cab actually looks pretty rad, but the 86 Pup is outmatched in most categories. The cabin is small without much legroom, and reviewers call the interior a bit flimsy. And even though the truck was relatively nimble because of its light weight, the handling felt a bit lazy. On the positive side, four motors were available, at least as far as I can tell. The base 1.8 liter made around 80 horsepower. You'd probably want to upgrade to the 2.3 liter four cylinder, which cranked out 96 horsepower. A 2.2 liter diesel was available, developing a tier worthy 58 horsepower. And a rare turbo diesel was an option with around 80 horsepower, though I've never actually seen one of those in person. Even with the large 2.3 liter, the pup took over 13 seconds to get to 60 miles an hour. Not bad, but not great for the era either. On the plus side, the Isuzu diesel achieved the best fuel economy in this group. At the time, the EPA rated it at 36 miles per gallon. In 86, Ford sold more Rangers than Isuzu sold of all of its models combined. Even with the lowest base price in this battle, Isuzu didn't move that many pups off showroom floors. Would this pup have won you over in 86, or was it too outgunned and outdated? And now with generous factory incentives, buy one and you'll get one free. You have our word on it. The final truck to enter the ring is the largest. It's the Jeep Comanche, actually a variant of the Jeep Cherokee SUV. There's a new truck on the road. It's called Comanche. It's built by Jeep. It's worth a look. At seven foot four feet in length, the Comanche truck bed was the longest of any compact truck in 86, easily fitting Andre the Giant in the back and it's actually longer than many full-size truck beds of today. In terms of truck bed utility, the Comanche leads the field, but in terms of practicality, it loses a few points as an extended cab was not available. But Jeep gained some points back by offering three engines. The base motor on the 86 Comanche was a 2.5 liter four cylinder making 117 horsepower. Optional was the same 2.8 liter Chevy V6 found in the S10, but curiously makes fewer horsepower. Renault also supplied a turbo diesel making 85 horsepower. None of the 86 Comanches were all that quick and none of them were all that powerful, but they offered a good ride, decent handling and muscular looks. Would the Jeep have earned a spot in your driveway in 1986? I might have wanted to wait until 87 when Jeep replaced the GM V6 with their own four liter V6 making way more power. Let me know what you think in the comments below. There's a new truck on the road. It's called Comanche. It's built by Jeep. It's worth a look. So who is the winner of this epic truck battle? Let's break it down into a few categories. Okay, so you're buying a compact truck because you want the best utility and practicality. These are trucks after all, how useful are they? Most of these trucks had similar bed options, so utility and practicality isn't that much different between any of them. But there is one that clearly stands out. The Jeep easily has the largest bed out of all of these. But practicality also includes carrying passengers, even if they're crammed in an extended cab jump seat. I'd say Nissan is the winner of this category with its very large bed and extended cab. 
Next up, efficiency. You're buying a compact truck because you're worried about another oil crisis, and the economy of the early 80s wasn't the greatest. Which one do you go for? For the four-cylinder manual two-wheel drive trucks, the Toyota wins easily, rated at 26 miles per gallon today and 29 miles per gallon back in the day. And if you're wondering why there are two columns here, the EPA changed the way they calculated fuel efficiency a couple of times. So modern ratings show MPG as a bit lower than they did back in the 80s. How about the V6 trucks? For manual two-wheel drive trucks, the Ford wins with an acceptable 19 miles per gallon. And how about the diesels? The Isuzu slays the competition. But remember, that truck only has 58 horsepower. Okay, next up is style. For me, at least on exterior looks, it's a toss up between the Nissan and the Jeep. And I do like the Mazda. And the Toyota is nice too. Uh, hold on one second. I'm being told that I have to choose one. Okay, I've always had a soft spot for the Nissan design, so I think that one will get my vote. Which one do you like the best? Next, how do these compare in terms of power and performance? Looking at the four cylinder options, the turbo Toyota leads the pack. After that, it's neck and neck between the Jeep and the Mitsubishi. How about the diesels? Still not 100% certain on the horsepower figures for the Isuzu diesels, but the Ford barely leads the way here. And how about the trucks that offered a V6? Ford and Nissan are right there at the top. And I'm not sure why there is a 10 horsepower discrepancy between the Chevy and the Jeep. As far as I can tell, they both use the same motor, but maybe I'm missing something. Now let's talk about how they are to drive. Based on reviews from back in the day, the Mazda led the way in terms of offering a very car-like ride. All right, what about price and value? For single cab, two-wheel drive, base model, no option trucks, only about $200 separates first through fifth place. The base Isuzu Pup is the budget leader and comes in at the super low price of $57.89. But in terms of value for the dollar, it was hard to beat the Toyota and the Nissan. How about value for the extended cab trucks? Toyota is the cheapest option at $67.48, and the Ford is over $1,000 more expensive, though the Ford may have come with more options. And no points for Mitsubishi and Jeep, as no extended cab was available. How about reliability and longevity? While several of these trucks are very reliable machines, I'd say none of them can match the Toyota. And which would your 80s family and friends think was cool? I probably have to go with a Mazda because of its stripe package. Finally, let's look at all these trucks through the lens of nostalgia. If we could fire up the time machine, which would we want to go back and experience? I'd have to go with a Jeep. It just looks so cool. Okay, so far there hasn't really been a clear winner. These trucks are all really closely matched. You might go with the Isuzu if you're on a budget. You might choose the V6 Ford for its power. You might choose the Jeep for its huge bed. But we need to pick one. It's not the most powerful truck here, but it's likely the most dependable and well-rounded. And it's the most affordable extended cab truck in this shootout. That truck is the 1986 Toyota Pickup, a compelling all-around package that over the long haul was sure to treat its owners well. So there you have it. The Toyota Pickup is the best compact truck of 1986, at least in my opinion. Who could ask for anything more? Toyota. And I could probably be persuaded to change my mind because these were all really good vehicles. What do you think? Which would you have picked in 1986? Let me know in the comments below. I'll have more videos with my collection of 80s and 90s cars, reviews of new and used vehicles, and road trips to unique locations. And of course, more videos where we look back at the rad cars of the past. Are there any cars you'd like to see me feature in a future video? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you later. Right, left, body blow.